What's up, this is Naked Eli, the most young clothed gamer, bringing you a legendary speedrun guide for Crow's Nest, the second mission in Halo 3. It is one of the more fun and more difficult missions to speedrun in the game. In fact, this was a part of the legendary speedrunner's choice playlist, and I was streaming, just hanging out last night, super chill session, because I was like, I don't think I have it in me to get a no-death run on Crow's, Lest, Crow's Nest on Legendary tonight, boys. And so I just did random playlists, and it just so happened that Crow's Nest on Legendary popped up, and that I got a no-death run on my first try. So here it is, starting out, we're going to dodge the Warthog explosion behind us, headshot those three grunts, hope they give us some uh, plasma grenades, and then we're going to throw one grenade to the left, one grenade to the right, and one great grenade to the side or behind this box here. That should clear out enough enemies that you can run on forward, and then noob combo that brute. Of course, the overcharged plasma pistol takes off his shields and stuns him and then the BR headshot will take him out clean. Then moving through here you don't have to kill all the grunts you can usually leave one to two alive but always good to kill them if you want to be super safe. Now moving on through we're going to shoot this explosive that's going to blow up a ton of the enemies on our left and then there are two one or to two grunts on our right at the stairs but we want to actually move forward here because landing on the deck will trigger the phantoms early. So I'm going to come over the left side has three grunts the right side has three grunts and then right here there's a frag grenade that I just stepped on to pick it up and that's why I didn't blow up the explosive first is because I wanted this frag grenade in my pocket. Now I like to position myself behind this box, shoot the plaza pistol and then that first grenade did not go where I wanted it to go, luckily the second one did. Now I'm going to turn around, I was a little slow to kill this guy right here and then by him throwing up the bubble and the grunts freaking out it actually makes it rather difficult to clean up the enemies but we're going to do our best right here i see an explosive so i shoot it to kill the grunt or at least try to kill the grunt and take off the brute's armor but he's a gold brute so he still had some left in which case we just use the crispy noob combo so the more you play this hangar fight the better you get at it it seems pretty difficult at first trying to optimize it but uh, just following my positioning and where I shoot and how I shoot things should help you out a lot. Right here, the safest spot is definitely behind these two boxes. Not to the left, not to the right, but behind. And then jumping up and down the noob combo. Right there, my plasma, went, uh, my plasma pistol ran out pretty much as soon as I started charging it. I didn't realize it only had two ammo in the clip. And in Halo 3, you actually lose ammo while you're charging your plaza pistol. So it shot off early, and then I luckily hit that nice stick on the brute. Between that phantom with the three brutes dropping, we actually have tons of time to go grab that BR ammo on the bottom. And now we're going to chill at our little home base right here next to these boxes one more time. So I like to hang to the left just to kill the first group of three grunts once again. Now here I'm going to stick that turret so that when we're leaving it doesn't shoot at us since this is the final wave for us. And then here I sort of, um, I thought that I was going to throw a normal grenade here and this messes everything up for me because nothing dies, everything scatters, I'm getting shot in the back. This is the sloppiest hangar fight I've had in my entire life. I think there's grunts chasing me on the bottom, I'm sort of freaking out. I was like, alright, I might as well start heading to the exit here, and um, that plasma grenade that I throw doesn't even do anything, but luckily, all the enemies die. We pick up that deployable cover, that's uh, very, very important, as you'll see in the section coming up. And then once, right there, those dudes doing the Michael Jackson, once every enemy in that hangar is clear, you want to book it out. Because um, by if you stay in the hangar, then there will actually be an additional wave that comes out. So the clear time is actually very important in that hangar. So just follow what I did, except for on the last part. On the last part, uh, try to kill everything much faster than I did and don't be sloppy. Now we're running on back to the room where we started because there's a bomb about to go off. But first we have to get through these drones. So I'll show you right here on the right, I just picked up two frag grenades. They're on the ground, jump up, throw that nade down at an angle and that'll kill the five dudes that are about to kill your marine. Now here we throw the deployable cover in front of the turret and then we're actually gonna shoot at the opening of the pipe where these drones are flying out. Now we can shoot through the deployable cover, but they can't shoot back at us. So it makes this fight 100% safe, super, super easy. Sometimes they all die really fast and your teammates kill all the other drones really quickly. And then you can just cruise through this section. Um, the fun fact, the drones actually fly out in Master Chief Collection at a much faster rate than in the original Halo 3. 
And so the current world record for this game is actually on this version of Crow's Nest. Now here we're going to wait for the checkpoint for a very good reason, because when we open up this door, it spawns the chieftain with a 50-50 chance of having either a flare or an invincibility. And we absolutely need an invincibility to get through this section. So overcharge, shoot him in the head three to four times, grab the invincibility if it's an invincibility, pick up the hammer in, in place of your plasma pistol, and then just book it on through. Feel free to hammer any of those guys if they're standing in your way, but try not to waste too much ammo. If it's a flare, by the way, that checkpoint will make it so that you can just run the checkpoint one more time, and then he sh will hopefully have invincibility the next time. Now here I tried to set up that, that fence on the wall, and then I was going to launch myself across this tunnel, which is faster and safer than running through it, but unfortunately my grenade wasn't placed well and I missed it. Now this is one of the coolest tricks. You want to aim for that little hole. If you look at it again, there's a hole in that wireframe. You're looking straight ahead in the middle, and then you run into it. As soon as you touch it, jump up and smash the hammer. That launches you across this canyon, one of the coolest tricks in the entire Halo franchise, and it, this is going to help us skip the entire barracks. So I wish I had known about that in my zero shot run because uh, the barracks is a very difficult part to do without shooting. But here you go, new Halo 3 tricks, always lots of fun. So here we're going to jump up, and then instead of jumping on the box, you can jump straight up onto the Pelican. Right here you want to try to stick these two Brutes, and we're going to ride the Pelican to the top. Now I, I missed the stick on the second Brute, sometimes he runs away like that, that's okay. We'll just turn around and then BR him down. Usually he'll run, he'll jump towards that explosive, so you can also use that explosive sometimes. Now I like to stick the brute shot guy on the right there, and there's at least one other brute shot, two carbiners, and one to two spikers. Not sure how many to be honest, but when we kill six brutes in this room, this is what's going to spawn up the door of brutes, four brutes on the left. So I guess I had killed five. I come here, I kill six, and now this is going to allow me to just backsmack these guys. They're scripted to uh, not shoot at you until they're all the way out the platform. And so notice I'm trying to backsmack them instead of wasting my hammer because we want to use our hammer for a couple box launches coming up. And so you can use your spike grenades to kill all the other dudes. That other um, jump pack brood in the corner always gets stuck so you can save whatever grenades or shots for him. Right there, you normally are at the door when it opens, but I was a little bit slow. And you want to bank a grenade off the wall on the left at the red line as soon as the door opens, usually. But either way, it's pretty safe to just run on through, usually. I think I just said the word usually seven times in that sentence, but that's okay. So here, we have another Cortana cutscene. We're going to switch to our hammer, open up this door, and we're going to launch ourselves across this room, look straight ahead, jump up, and as soon as your reticle passes the top of the box, you smash it. And then here we're going to kill that, uh, that grunt on the right, activate our camo, and then we're going to run straight on through and skip all of these grunts and jackals and beam rifle dudes, and it's really that easy using the camo. Now this is the riskiest part in the entire mission. I've calculated like a, at least less than a 30% chance of success on this. You come up to here, you hammer that guy, throw a grenade up there so he usually gets off the turret, and then try to turn around and stick this guy with the brute shot. I completely missed him. Usually the regen is still up, which is giving you some shields, and then hopefully you don't get fuel rotted in the back. As of right now, that is by far the fastest and most consistent strategy for getting through the boss room using these tactics. However, it's still very, very risky. So don't be surprised if it takes you three, four, five times before it's successful. I calculated that even if you kill everything in the room swiftly, it still takes at least four times as long as just trying to run through. So just try and attempt it, and if you do it in less than four tries, then you're going really fast. So here we are going to, you can do this little trick called the butterfly to ride the drones. It's where you have some ammo, um, at, like let's say I shot the BR, you know, I, can, I have the ability to reload. I can smash the reload and melee buttons at the same time, and then the animations will cancel each other out, but you'll still lunge towards your target. And so you ride the drones all the way to the end. I think I did that in my zero shot run, I'm not quite sure. But uh, in anyways, in this run, I found in MCC it's too risky to do. Now coming through here, there's usually a box right there that I use to hammer launch to the final elevator. 
Um, again, it's the same as the other box launch. You just look straight at it and then jump up and smack the hammer as soon as your reticle passes the top of it. But alas, it got blown off by some grenade or something, so we're just gonna do the old-fashioned walk to the end. I was racing HLG Nagato, not by choice. He's a very good speedrunner, current uh, world record holder for Halo 3 Easy and ODST Easy and Legendary on full game, the whole full game. Um, and the, the Master Chief Collection just decided to make him my rival this time, I guess because he's the fastest on my friends list. And so I really wanted to beat his time, but I had a sloppy hanger and a few other parts didn't optimize. So alas, a 10.28. Hope you guys enjoyed the speed run. Next up, we have a really fast Savo Highway. I'll see you then. Peace.